So I'm curious, what would, we've talked a little bit about what would an in-person niche fighting game event look like? What would you want to see out of it? What is important to the Indian niche fighting game community, right? I think first and foremost, variety. There would need to be a decent representation of games because like the space of niche in indie is so vast, right? Uh, yeah, ideally a March of Champions cab somewhere. Well, and like legitimately, that was that's one of my things. Would people want to see these things on original hardware? Or, since we play so many of them through emulators and through netplay anyways, is the emulated um, solution good enough? Because if, if we're going to make a big event out of it, then it would stand to reason to get the most out of it. So, could we get the original hardware? But that's a much bigger logistical problem. Want and reality pretty far apart in the niche cultures. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so that's the that's the question, right? When this has come up, I think one of the one of the things that always is discussed from the organizer perspective is kill. All right, cool. How practical is this going to be? How expensive is, is this going to be? How can we make it reasonable and affordable? Because I think another one of the key values of the niche and indie fighting game scene is affordability and accessibility, right? The ability to play in these events. So, I think. For a such such a specialized event, sometimes I'm like, should we just accept that we're gonna have to pay more, and say let's do a a premium event, or or do we say how do we make it the most accessible, cheapest um, experience for as many people as possible? If you're gonna go super premium, then I think making sure you have the original hardware is kind of essential. Yeah, when you want something to thrive long term, part of the infancy is saving money. Uh, and people and part of the culture usually understands absolutely um, and so yeah yeah thinking like yeah how do you how do you prepare for an event long term yeah yeah starting small and building obviously right I, I, I'm more talking like what would a theoretical um, gathering of um, niche and indie games be like like it's not gonna be it's not gonna be Evo but but niche fighting games like it's gonna be different than that there are different values at play like to xdtla to your point there right like part of making an event to thrive long term how do we create an event that is able to do that where does that start i think a big part of that honestly is the obviously doing the doing the local build out thing it would be really interesting if three or four relatively close but distinct geographical scenes could build that up we already have actually a really good opportunity like there's a lot of um new york state area folks who are into a lot of different niche and indie games um and then there's montreal and toronto so we have three relatively close ones right there and i think if you could get consistent like events catering to these things whether it be part of larger tournaments or like as side things at weeklies um and then yeah and then kind of like and then build out right and then ideally be able to bridge those uh those two or three scenes oops for the larger events but having this like core base of enough players in these little pockets right like i said montreal toronto new york if there are 10 people reliably in each of those places who are willing to travel a little distance for like a niche slash indie event, then then you could build a decent size regional, right? Oh, nice. Not paying attention to the side swap. Yeah, a little sad that Get On My Level doesn't support side events, right? It, and it wouldn't, right? Like, if you just go there and set something up, I'm sure there are people who would play. For me, like, I wouldn't make a point. Like, I'm not. Like, I looked at Gommel and I'm like, I'm, I don't want to do it because there's just, there's not enough that's there for me that I know there's no space for that kind of stuff. They're not prioritizing it, which is fair. They don't have to. Um, but it means that I'm going to look to go to other events. XCTLA saying they think um, you don't have access to the community like that, but holding events that are beginner friendly would be nice stuff that helps people understand the fundamentals um yeah yeah janet's garden of chaos or chow's rule set again mike bad jump sorry i'm trying to read the chat and play at the same time 
stuff that helps people understand the fundamentals, like the J like, uh, Janet at Garden of Chaos rule set. Play a match using only a button, play a match where your opponent chooses your character, or in a match where you can only do this, that, or the other. Part of the reason that I ran mystery tournaments is because it is so... It is so friendly to newcomers, where everyone's on a bit of an even playing field. There are players who are really fucking good at mystery, at a lot of games, and know a lot of the standard mystery game tournaments. Um, but I think most people, they don't know what they're in for. Um, and considering that, yeah, there's less of a... Um, a concern about I'm gonna get I'm gonna get bodied by the the top three player. It's like, dude, no one knows what they're up against. So, and and how much practice do you really have? Even for me, even if I play a lot of these games, the level of practice I have is pretty minimal. It's minimal, especially in a competitive setting. And so I always wonder about that. Yeah, what other formats are available to players or to us as tournament organizers that ease people into it. The Garden of Chaos stuff works extremely well for people who are already committed to a single community. Um, it's a little tougher to do that, like, I'm probably less likely to join a Street Fighter with specific rules because I'm not super familiar with it, right? So I think that works for, like, people in the community who are at lower levels helps them engage outside of standard tournament formats. But no, but legitimately, outside of mystery games, I actually struggle to think of of like what kind of what kind of tournament format would be able to ease in a new player and like alleviate some of the stress, right? Cuz I think that's it. It's um there's something about mystery that is like kind of low stakes because of its nature, and I'm not sure what other ways to generate the kind of low stake nature events where you have like a point structure ratio tournament right characters are listed in tiers and you only have x number of points to buy characters um so yeah point buy system i guess is the best way to put it and that creates like it means that sure we're all playing marvel 3 but you can't get your team composition because like i'm not allowed basically i'm not gonna no one can get enough points to get um whatever mori doom virgil but yeah, a point buy system I think is something that could do, or alternatively an auction tournament where it's like literally your buy-in for the tournament is people, you auction off characters. So, right, once again, using Marvel 3 as an example, um, be like, how much does somebody want to pay for Morgan on their team? And you got the Morgan players bidding in like whatever, one or five dollar increments. There were some, there were some amazing events. Um, Keats, now of... Uh, Rumbleverse and um, Killer Instinct fame, they worked on a tournament series ages and ages ago called Ultimate Fighting Game Tournament, UFGT. And a bunch of the UFGTs had some really interesting mystery game events, they had really interesting side tournaments, including auction tournaments. And some of the, their, I remember, one of their Marvel 3 auction tournaments was phenomenal. Yeah, man, they were excellent, excellent tournaments. And I remember watching people bid on Marvel 3 characters. Um, and it's like, shit, man, you have a, whatever, $280 team. Like, are you going to lose this tournament? Are you going to lose this tournament with a $280 team to a $7 team of Beautiful Joe, Arthur, and Sienko? And it's like, yeah, man, I'm entering this tournament for as cheap as possible. I'll do what I, do whatever I can with the team that I get such an interesting way to play the game like I genuinely genuinely love that and I think that's a way it it's it is simultaneously very low stakes and very high stakes where you can engage with it in a high stakes way or you can engage in it in a very low stakes way and say hey man I'm just gonna have fun with weird team comps and see what happens so all right all right so it's already right mystery tournaments point buy and auction are probably three formats that I think would, would do well to help entice players into different games. Oh, that would be really interesting. Have it go to, yeah, funds for the original hardware of the niche games. That could be very, very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, that is another... Talking about what would we want out of these events, right? I mean... I think a lot of the niche and indie scene value supporting, like, support your indies, right? Like, doing, making things right, making things sustainable. So, yeah, is there a way we can do that? That some of those funds can go to um, supporting the event? And, like, look, you think about doing an auction for 
Especially some of the niche games where you're like, you know some of the, the characters are really wild, right? Some shit is really OP. It's like, man, give me a give me a $50 Chibi Moon versus a whatever, uh, $7 Jupiter, right? In, in Sailor Moon S. There are a lot of regional TOs who are happy to run some niche fighter stuff. So, the question is, can we get people to run events consistently enough to build up a community who's willing to travel? That's that's really that's really it. If we want to get a some some good even some good regional stuff, like I I got to think about here, how do we get people from Montreal, from Ottawa to come to Toronto? for a niche fighter event. I know there are Ottawa and Montreal folks who would be more than happy to play in these events. How do we build the, the community and the, the drive and the infrastructure for those kind of events? Have they been getting, really? Okay, like I gotta, I gotta admit man, like I don't, I watch, I watch Maximilian dude sometime. I'm, I'm curious what their thoughts are. Yeah, what is, what is Maximilian dude and, and Justin Wong see a niche fighting event looking like? There needs to be some legitimate more infrastructure work done on that shit though. Like with Safety Man, like I need to work a little bit closer with Safety Man and Neo Russell over at Toronto Top Tiers to bring more cool niche and indie fighting game stuff. I don't know, I don't know what it's gonna take, I don't know whose pocket I need to slip a $50 bill into to like, get get some like, top 4 stream time for fucking Robo O or Murfight, but I will do it. Matt, is it your pocket? I will slip the 50 into your, into your pocket, dude, don't worry, no one's, no one's looking. Okay, but yeah, because the guys are basically saying, and that's it, and this is what, like, we've been saying this in the niche fighting game community for the last couple years. There is this growing group of people who want to play this large variety of games. And sometimes the, the events aren't there to support them. And you take what you can get, basically, right? And so these, these, these games, they will get together, right, at events like Frosty Fausting and Combo Breaker. So we'll get together at these events and host them, and they'll be particular ones. Vortex Gallery does an amazing job as being, like, kind of a really, really big space and uh, an event to, to have those kind of games get represented. And yeah, Hayama, I agree with you, right? I genuinely believe that a, a, a niche-focused fighting game tournament in the US or in Canada could be doable, right? It could be something that that works and and can draw a big enough audience.